Hi there, this is David, and today we're going to be ranking every single English-released Ease game, all 12 of them. As action RPGs go, this is one of the most solid franchises, really able to stand the test of time. And while there was a wane in the series after Ease 7, Falcom really brought it back to the forefront with Ease 8 and 9. So, with that renewed interest in the series, I feel like it's my duty to let you know all about them. And let me just say this, while I am ranking them, there's really not a bad game in the series. Well, except for the first game on our list. So let's go ahead and get shipwrecked and get started. Number 12, Ease 3, Wanderers from Ease, released for the SNES. This game is known as the black sheep of the series and for good reason. Normally Adolf fights in a top-down manner, but here they change it to a side-scrolling mess to compete with Zelda 2. Only, they didn't give him any of Link's cool powers. They decided to incapacitate him instead and then throw him to awful dungeons full of enemies hell-bent on killing him and then arming him with a toothpick. Thank God this was later remade for the PSP where it is there so much better. Anyway, Adol leaves Asteria and travels to Doki's homeland of Redmont where he learns much more about his blue-haired, muscle bear friend. This one is easily the worst in the series because of its gameplay changes, notorious difficulty, and I really don't recommend it all that much. I would actually just say skip it unless you're a diehard fan. Number 11, Ease 1 and 2, released for the NES, TurboGrafx-16, Wii, PSP, DS, and PC. While the original releases on the NES had them split into two separate games, they've been bundled together ever since, so I'm going to rank them here together. As the first games in the series, combat and the story can be basic, but there is fun and simplicity. You're going to be running around like a battering ram, slamming into all the enemies around him. I love it. The story follows Adol as he saves the land of Hysteria, and along the way, he'll meet recurring characters such as the twin goddesses of Ease, his best friend Dogi, and his somewhat canonical love interest Lilia. The problem, though, lies in the obtuse progression as well as the incredibly mazy and long dungeons that you have to go through. It is definitely showing its age by now. Number 10, Ease 4, Mask of the Sun, released for the SNES. Mask of the Sun isn't a bad game, it's just that there are better versions of Ease 4. Let me explain. There's actually three entirely different versions of Ease 4. Not remakes or anything like that. Seriously, three different Ease 4s, all developed by three different companies and released on different systems. It's kind of ridiculous. But the other two versions of this game are so much better than the SNES offering. The problems with it stem from a rush development cycle. Basically, this entry was competing with its TurboGrafx-16 doppelganger, and the team wanted Mask of the Sun to come out first. And as they say, a delayed game is eventually good, but a rushed game is bad forever. Number 9, Ease 5 Sand City of Kefin, released for the SNES. This game marked a change in the series. It feels much more RPG-ish than the games that came out before it, and it now takes place on the continent of Africa. Not only that, the combat is much more traditional overhead affair, with jumping, hacking, and slashing as well as magic. It reminds me a lot of Zelda A Link to the Past. It's well done, but for whatever reason, it seems to be another black sheep. Maybe because it's just so easy. There are no item limitations, so you can stock up with 99 herbs, and then you can be completely invincible. In fact, Japanese gamers complained so much that Falcom retooled it and then released an expert version of the exact same game. It's just too bad that they didn't add a difficulty selector for the first time around, because it's not like they had DLC back then. You had to rebuy the entire game. Number 8. Ease 6 Ark of Nepishtim, released for the PS2, PSP, and PC. Ease was hard to get a hold of in the West back in the day, and while I did know about the series, I wasn't truly introduced to it until this entry on the PS2, and boy, did I love it. One thing that normally gets brushed aside when discussing the series is just how short the first six entries are. And because of their relative brevity, you can conceivably play through the entire franchise in like a week. Which is such nice reprieve in today's day and age of the longer the better. I don't subscribe to that though. Give me short and sweet any day of the week. Adol has finally left the old world, and now he's shipwrecked on the islands of Canaan, which are part of the Atlas continent, or America 
with the Canaan Islands being akin to the Caribbean. Elemental swords are introduced, as is quick travel. All in all, it is a solid entry. Number 7, Ease 4, Dawn of Ease, released for the Wii and TurboGrafx-16. Here we have the second 90s edition of Ease 4, this time on the TurboGrafx-16. Earlier, we saw the SNES version, and both games followed the same general outline of events in the forests of Celsetta. There's full voice acting though here, great animated cutscenes, a return to the bump combat system, as well as a true magical system, not the awful rings of the third game. Interestingly though, even though this game is so much better, Falcom originally said that the SNES version was the canonical one. That is, until they made their own Ease 4 about 20 years later. As a cool side note though, not only do you go through the lands of Celsetta, but you also get to travel back to Asteria and revisit your friends from the first two games. It's just so well done. Number 6, Ease 3 Oath and Falgana, released for the PSP and PC. This is the much needed remake of Ease 3 Wanderers from Ease, the worst game on our list. And while the SNES game changed the Ease formula to be unrecognizable, it is now much more traditional. It is the Ease that we all know and love, complete with full voice acting and a balanced difficulty. The remake is so much more streamlined using modern Ease combat system instead of just steamrolling your enemies with the bump combat. You hack, slash, jump, and cast magic as you would in any other action RPG, and even though you're visiting Dogi's hometown and he does accompany you, Adol does have to fight his way through Felgana alone. Number 5, Ease 4, Memories of Celsetta, released for the PS4, Vita, and PC. 20 years after jobbing at the other Ease 4s, Falcom finally got it together and made their own game, still taking place in the forests of Celsetta and still following the same general outline of the first two games. However, because this is such a modern Ease experience, it is so much further fleshed out. The story is completely rewritten to be more in line with those modern games and previously minor NPCs have now become full-fledged party members. This is one of the three games that I bought the PlayStation Vita for, and although it's now available on Steam, I'm not upset that I bought it because it's just that fantastic. Number 4, E7, released for the PSP and PC. This entry marked a quantum leap and change in the E's formula, as it's now the first time that Adol actually gets companions. Five other party members join him on his journey, each outfitted with their own skills, limit breaks, weaponry, and different styles of fighting. Also, a sort of rock-paper-scissors weapon tree has been implemented, similar to the Fire Emblem series, but in an action form. Like in Secret of Mana, all three of your party members will fight on the screen at the exact same time, and the length has been jacked up to a 40-hour game rather than like the 10 or so hours all the previous games took up. It is a marked improvement to an old formula, and it really spices things up. Number 3, Ease Origin, released for the PS4, PC, Vita, Xbox One, and Switch. Ease Origin is a strange bird. It's the only game that does not star Adol. In fact, it takes place before he was even born. It's a prequel to the entire series taking place 700 years before the events of the first game, and it stars three different characters with three different playstyles. It's pretty much a straightforward dungeon crawl through the Darm Tower with each floor representing a different biome. I loved the game, and with all the different themes it never got stale. And with three different characters and three different stories and three different modes of attack, there was a lot of replay value packed into this tight game. Number 2, Ease 8 Lacrimosa of Dina, released for the PlayStation 4, PC, Vita, and Switch. Popular opinion says that this is the best game in the series, and it is the first time that it's returned to a console since E6 on the PlayStation 2, and then Falcom used that hardware to their best advantage to create a true masterpiece. Adol is now shipwrecked on the cursed island of Siren, and it's out to him to explore the tropical landscapes, rescue other passengers ruined by the shipwreck, and then build a bustling settlement. It's kind of odd, because in all the other games he washes up in the civilization, but not here. It's like some sort of prehistoric, uncharted landscape. And then there's the Dana segments, where you learn all about the history of the island and her connection to it, as well as her connection to Adol. 
Number 1. Ease 9 Monstrum Nox. Released for the PS4, PC, and Switch. This is the latest entry in the series, and it is my personal favorite. Rather than giving you a full country to explore, Adol is confined to a prison city which he explores with the help of gifts, which allow him to run straight up walls, hover, have x-ray vision, or warp around, among many other things. It really makes you feel like a superhero as he goes zipping up spires, flying over ravines, and slaughtering your foes. The storyline is decidedly dark, and there's the mystery of the two Adols to unravel as well. Another mystery that I want solved, though, is why Dogi went from hot as hell on his island adventure in Ease 8 to just kind of tired looking here. Maybe he can find some good eye cream here in the city. Well, that's it for all the mainline English released Ease games ranked. How would you rank the series? Do you agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video and wanted to hear it on the channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon, heading on over to Twitch for some streaming fun or join the Discord to chat and hang out. The links to them can be found in the video description. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.